two uninhabited Pacific islands. More than 5,000 miles from the UK. One will be inhabited by 14 British men, while a separate island will be home to 14 British women. When pushed to the limits of human endurance, will it be brute power or mental strength that wins the day? Who will have what it takes to stay alive? Tonight, we follow the men. Britain today, we've never been further from our hunter-gatherer origins. Doors are opening. But I want to know, when stripped of everything, has modern man still got that instinct to survive? To find out, I'm marooning 14 ordinary men on a desert island. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. This could be the worst decision we've ever made. This time, it'll be harder than ever. They'll have to endure six weeks in the height of the harsh tropical storm season. Bring it on, Mother Nature, I say. If this is the worst you can do... They will be utterly alone, filming everything themselves. We have two choices. One, we go down the 40-foot ravine. Holy shit! Well, we keep going through this arsehole of a jungle. They'll have to find their own water and hunt for their own food. You can't a prehistoric animal! You lazy bunch of bone-idle bastards! Have these modern-day men got what it takes to survive? <sighs> That's the hardest thing I've done. I personally don't think men are as strong now as they were, I wouldn't even say 50 years ago, even five years ago, because we have it too easy. The interesting question to ask, actually, is if we lost everything, what would happen to us? It'd be nice to think I've come off the island feeling a little bit more macho, a little bit more alpha male, a little bit more popular with the ladies. I'm about to abandon these men on a remote Pacific island to see if they can survive. They will be utterly alone. My eldest lad's 19 is at university. He only needs me for money and a lift. And the youngest one's too cool to hang around with Dad. My dream is for them guys to go, that's my dad, that. That's fantastic. My dad did that. I don't think I've done anything that's put myself at risk, really. But I'm scared when you're sticking a graphic designer on an island with no other skills whatsoever. Anything could happen. These 14 ordinary men do not know each other and they have no experience of living in the wild. At the moment, I don't enjoy day-to-day -day life. I've got a stressful job, I've got a newborn baby at home. I want to go out on the island to get away from the day-to-day -day bullshit. I think everyone in life does take certain things for granted. Electricity when you turn on the light, having a warm shower, having breakfast. When it's not there and you wake up in the morning and go, where's the next meal coming from? It's a man test, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> OK, guys, we're getting closer. You are very remote here. The next stop that way is New Zealand. What I want to find out is, has all of this cushioning that civilization has experienced over the last 50 years made us totally lose touch with that survival instinct that I believe is deep within us all. OK, guys, I need you to be my eyes for any rocks. There are loads of rocks here. It takes an extreme situation to find out what people are really made of. What you're about to embark on, it will be the toughest thing you will ever do. You can do this, all right? You can do it. The men's home for the next six weeks is an uninhabited island in a remote Pacific archipelago. The 11 kilometers of coastline is dominated by treacherous cliffs and rocky headlands. Vicious swells and powerful ocean currents means there's no easy way onto the island. I'm gonna try and get you guys as close as I can, all right? but you will end up swimming. Any of you guys are weak swimmers, 
it is a good time to say. I've never swum this distance before, not even in a swimming pool, but I will get there. I will get there. Age won't stop me doing this. It's not often in one's life someone actually challenges your morals, challenges you physically, and this does. That's why I want to do it. Who can't swim confidently? Confident with unconfident, yeah? Let's go. The men must make the 75 metre swim to the island fully clothed. Help each other, help those who are weaker. Get back, get let's back. go, let's go. Strong undercurrents mean the men need to get to shore as quickly as possible. Get in! Doing good, got me. Okay, go, get out of the water. Go, go, go. Woo! That was the damnedest thing I ever did. <laughs> Do I do it? Oh, I couldn't have gone much further. But well, that's only a taste of what we got to come then. Bring it on, Mother Nature! Hey, what are you doing? Well, the, the advice is to save your own piss, uh, which is a bit unnerving. With only two days survival training, initiative will be key. Essentially, it's water, isn't it? Is that your piss? That's my piss, mate. You've got to save it for <laughs> Yeah, yeah, save, been told, anyway. save your piss. <laughs> Drink your own piss? <laughs> I hope not. So, they look a bit like a party of drowned rats at the moment. Kind of let the chaos begin. Uh, but what I do know is when I return in six weeks' time, the 40 men, if there's still 40 men there, which, to be honest, I doubt, the men that do remain will be changed. It's time for me and the crew to leave. We won't be back until the end of the experiment. For the next six weeks, the men will have to live entirely on their own wits. To make sure these men at least have a fighting chance of survival, I've ensured the island's got enough water, indigenous animals and vegetation on it to keep them alive. It's teeming with wildlife. But what they've got to have is the ingenuity to find it, catch it and kill it. What's your name, mate? Oh. Paul. Oh, Paul. Ross. Paul. Hello, Ross. All right. From here on in, everything you see will be filmed by the men themselves. Why don't we get everybody together and then we're just all talking, we'll work out something that we're going to do, and then we're, we're all going to be heading that way, I'm assuming anyway, because it looks a little bit safer than this, because it would be dark right, soon. Come on, lads, let's make use of some of this energy while we've got it. All of the men will film, but four of the group are trained and experienced camera operators. Pam Ross. Sam. How you doing, buddy? Who'll be living under exactly the same conditions as everyone else. Oh, I'm like a fucking mule horse, aren't I? <laughs> uh, the brains of a donkey. Obviously, because we are having to film everything ourselves, we've got to cart all of like the camera gear, batteries, and everything with us. Let's get on with it. Fuck's sake, this is survival, not Good Morning Britain. As well as the camera equipment, they'll have a medical kit, two jerry cans containing a day's supply of water, basic fishing equipment, and a handful of tools. Guys, how many knives do we have? Let's count them in. Three yeah? knives, three machetes. Fine. Three right. knives, that's okay. easy. Let's all gather round in one group, guys. I'm Barney, and I'm a paramedic from, uh, from Leicester. Oh, yeah. Andy. Yeah. I'm Andy Bennett, builder from Milton Keynes. We've got a fucking builder, everybody! Yeah. Yeah. Sophie's not a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Piers, I am a doctor. Did you say yeah. Yeah. I'm Kyle, and I'm a website consultant. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Paul. I'm uh, I invented the dice. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a construction contracts manager. It's 4 p.m. With only two hours of daylight remaining, the men's priority has to be finding a safe place to shelter for the night. If they can't, they'll have to sleep rough on the jungle floor alongside potentially deadly scorpions, snakes and caiman crocodiles. We're assuming that the, the north, north side, side of the island. island would be nice, beachy, sandy, okay. flat seas. Paul thinks the group's best option is a beach. Let's go. And he's convinced they have time to cross the island to find one before dark. Who else was imagining sunny beaches when they thought about coming out here? These trees here are very sharp. Oh! There you go. 
I believe it will now be referred to as the porcupine tree. Vicious. The interior of the island is three square kilometres of mangrove swamp and unbroken jungle. And I know from experience that moving through dense island undergrowth is slow, exhausting work. It would do all you can to stop you in your tracks. And often the harder you push, the harder it pushes back. Well, stop! There's a snake down here. It's a boa, yes. isn't it? Take its head off if it's a decent size, mate. Get stuck in. Is anyone going to help me? I'm trying to carry a bag and a machete and kill a snake. He's looking pretty aggressive. He's coiling, isn't he? I need a long stick just to put on its head. Mind your... No, don't, 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 don't do that, for fuck's sake. Listen, should we just throw this case on it? No. Part of me thinks, should we just leave it? Didn't even flinch, did it? Yeah, yeah, let's keep going. And if we don't get out of this shrub, we're going to be sleeping here tonight. It ain't safe and it's not cool. With just an hour to go until nightfall, the men have covered barely 400 metres. Paul! Yes? You going to come and get a drink? The darker it's getting, the more it's getting a little bit worrying. I'll tap on it when you're done. Yeah. Somehow I've fallen into chief navigator mode, but I'm on it. My days are very stressful. It really doesn't fucking matter. I don't give a fuck. A lot of the time, I think that most people are fucking idiots. Just get that load out, get that load out. You can't build the internal walls anyway. Being called a bastard is just a friendly greeting in the building industry. Get in there and get it done. This experience might change me. Hopefully for the better, it might make me be a little bit more tolerant of other people. Come on, fuckers. This is going to take us fucking hours. Yeah. It's about to get darker and darker as yeah, well. Yeah, I know, so that's why we've just got to just get through it. We need to start to think, do we want to be hacking through this stuff when it's pitch black? Or at the next time we see a clearing, are we going to think about settling down for the night? I personally want to just plough on and make it. I mean, it's going to get darker in here quicker than it is on the beach. I say we plough on. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. I don't know what to say right now. I never had the money to go travelling. I've never done anything that's been a bit sort of edgy, that's been a bit dangerous, I guess. I don't think I'm as confident as I say I am, and I think a lot of what I do can be a front. The sort of persona of, of alpha male to me is, every, is everything my stepdad was. I saw enough of him growing up to realise who not to be. I guess it's time to find out who I really am. Keep coming, we're only 100 metres away! I keep saying it's like the beach is 100 metres away. I'm sort of getting a little bit pissed off because we've been walking for about fucking miles and it's not here. The temperature's freeing. At the back, 51 year old builder Andy is struggling to keep up. No, it's like every man for himself. For fuck's sake. First, cut. We've not even made any ground, and we are all fucked. Joe, you get some oxygen. Fuck right, Randy well. and help, yeah. He's if carrying a really awkward. Training. He's carrying a really awkward box on his own. I know it's a ball ache, kid, but you're carrying one of the fucking easiest things in the world as heavy as it fuck. is. I know it's heavy. I'm a fuck, pal. No, I'm not. But it's easy. You want to carry this bag? It's fucked. I'll swap I'm you now, mate. Sure. If you want. At the front, Paul pushes on despite the group's growing descent. We got lights in those cameras, Sam. Bit of infrared. How you doing, mate? Some people ain't playing ball. In what way? What do you mean? Oh, cracking on with fuck all, you know? We could all do that, like a hero with a machete. Come on, fuck's sake. I know we all want to get on, but... You've got to think of everybody else now. We're a team. You can't just be selfish, you know? Oh, there's a bit of light, look. This is amazing. I found the sea. Ah. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Booyah. Beach. <laughs> Pina coladas. <laughs> Oh, 
Let's see how this thing goes down. I never thought I'd be so happy to see the beach in my entire life. Well done, mate. Well done. <laughs> Fuck. Nice one, mate. Oh. Never doubted myself. Never, never underestimate your own abilities. <laughs> <laughs> The sun's just beginning to set, so we're just in time, and everyone is on such a high right now. That's a whale! That's a whale! Wow. Wow, 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 wow. We stood here watching the sunset, and there's whales swimming past us. Pretty cool. Don't get that often, do you? Sixteen hours ago, I dropped 14 ordinary British men on a remote desert island. I have slept for a minute. For one minute. They have spent their first night on the beach with no shelter. Is that really shit? <laughs> oh, what have we done? <laughs> <laughs> you ever get that realisation you've done something you didn't quite think all the way through? At one point, I was shitting it, we're gonna get washed away. I was like, ah, yeah. can you get that close? I mean, yeah, what, 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 you can see the line, mate. You can see the line. The yeah, line's yeah. what? Three foot away from where we were. Mm. <laughs> Look at that of rubbish on this beach. Has anyone found a left shoe? Yeah, but these, I'm not too sure if I'm gonna go for these. What? Oh, you! A bit last season. Hey, lads, look. Oh. Found it, pink pair. Yeah. <laughs> these are bloody comfortable. <laughs> Look at these bad boys. This is the male version. <laughs> <laughs> the men came onto the island with just a day's supply of drinking water. Mouthfuls. But after yesterday's arduous trek in 34 degree heat, it's all but gone. Tropical storm season, really, there shouldn't be any shortage of water on the island. And obviously, rain itself is drinkable without purification. But once it hits the ground, it becomes contaminated. All sorts of bacteria and nasties there. From experience, I can tell you, animals aren't fussy about where they crap. Oh, oh my god. The amount of crap that's in there. That's fucking horrible. Without boiling, this rancid water would almost certainly give the men stomach cramps and diarrhoea. It's not salty, but... No, I'll tell you what, I've had hangover shits that smell better than that. Guys, can we... Like why do, why, why do we all together? kind of gather in and have some sort of conflap about what we're going to do today? Yeah, I think that might be a very good idea, Piers. Go on, guys, gather round. Right, plan of action, lads. Yeah, we 100% need to try and make a fire now. If we don't make a fire and something to boil new water, we are going to be in bad shape by tomorrow morning. Food is becoming a priority very quickly for a lot of people. We're going to have to get something substantial to eat fairly soon. Right, meet the journey. Shall we dance, sir? Is that ready? Let's go. The men decide to split up. Having eaten nothing since they arrived, the majority of the group head off to look for food, while engineer Dan and builder Andy take on the fire lighting. It's quite a lot of pressure to get this fire going. You're down? Right. I'm up, yeah. To right. Me, to me. Awesome. That is not an ideal start, is it? That did one stroke. Oh, lads. I shot my load. Round about here, there's about six, maybe ten snails and shit, yeah? Along the coast, 47-year-old Vic has decided to put Joe, the group's youngest member, to work. We should definitely have put some fucking shoes on. That might have been a wise idea, fella. Oh, just anything. Limpets, crabs, give them a crack. Snails, you spot them, fella, and I'll club them. Do these snails bite? I feel sure something with legs is gonna come out of there, innit? And nip me. Don't put your finger where you won't put your dick, because it might get bit. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how the nearest we get to Michelin star. Will we put it on a bed of anything? One. A 
morning's hard graft provides nothing more than a handful of limpets. Give it a good old cheer. Fucking hell. Yeah, yeah, tough. <laughs> limpets are horrendous. You don't buy them in supermarkets, do you? So they're not known for being very nice. I don't think they're very nice at all. <laughs> For now, the men will have to go hungry. Stop. Who said there's no smoke without fire? Lying bastards. <laughs> Players pissed me off a little bit. I just don't know what we're doing wrong. Lighting a fire has become an urgent priority. It's 34 degrees in the shade, and the men have had little to drink in the past 12 hours. We've literally, we've got no water. None at all. No. I had a piss 20 minutes ago, and it was like pissing lion's golden syrup. <laughs> I had to push it out. <laughs> that is not viscous and clear. No, it's definitely not. The men are starting to show the telltale signs of serious dehydration. Thirsty. Really bloody thirsty. <laughs> Out, fuck all. The vultures are circling already. <laughs> <laughs> Can you look at the size of that? Jesus. That's prehistoric. How about your glasses? Do you reckon we could... Can I, can I try your glasses? Try it, mate. Yeah. yeah. With their need for fire now critical, web consultant Kyle has an idea he wants to try. We've got Andy's glasses. Just basically using the sun to focus that in one point. It's given us quite a lot of heat. Come on. Don't think that's going to work, the old glasses. Let go, let go. Oh, go on, Andy, lad! Oh, sticks, fuck! Get the little sticks, preparation. Where's the next one? Where's the rest of the shit? Where's the rest of the stuff? Sticks. Fucking sticks! Get up there, get up there. And again, just whack by your side, fellas. No, no, it's just brutal. Brutal. Brutal, mate. Breathe it. Go on, Andy. 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 Go Bingo, well done, you two. It was Kyle that started it. Good, of course it was. He showed me the way and I followed through. I see, we've done well, we got there. Absolutely brilliant and well done. What a dark horse, skews the pun. We all take it back about the IT guy. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> yes! Well done, Kyle. After eight hours of trying, the men finally have a fire on which to boil the stagnant water. I'm going to drink and drink and drink until my piss runs clear. And your verdict is? I mean, it's almost not normal water. There's a bit of sort of pond in there. That is, that is top notch. It doesn't taste like piss, does it? <laughs> it's like my way tea. As long as the fire stays lit, the men will have a source of safe drinking water. Chuffed with that. Chuffed with that. What an achievement, eh? But keeping it alight during tropical storm season will be a huge challenge. Shit, look at that rain. So look, like, right there, tropical paradise. Awesome. And then there, shithole. Shithole. It's like Waitrose and Audi, all in one picture. Right what I'm then. worried about is everyone's off doing other things, and in a minute it's going to be pissing down with rain. I actually think it'd be quite important to build a shelter for the fire. Yeah. I, I've not got the energy to build a shelter or anything at the moment. If I could, I would, I promise you. A little bit worried about Andy. He uh, seems to have separated himself from the group a little bit. Um, when everybody's together, he walks off. He's now making a bed over there, which just seems a bit childish. Um, feels like he doesn't want to be part of the group. Hey ho, got a bed. All I want to do at the moment is get some sleep. Just some, you know? I think middle age has made me boring. 
I've got a beautiful wife, lovely house, nice job, etc. All the stuff that most people strive to get. And yet, I'm still searching for something. Perhaps all men get like that, I don't know. Perhaps I'm at a midlife crisis. I don't like myself as much as I used to, put it that way. I think I need to, a new adventure to put that right. Oh. 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 O
sitting down, head in his hands, kind of looks like he's feeling sorry for himself, really. And he's, he's obviously missing home. What's her name? Charlotte. <sighs> you miss her, mate, don't you? So we made it in two. <sighs> yeah. Best thing that happened to me, huh? How long have you been together? Five years. For the first time ever, because I met her, that I've gone 24 hours without speaking to her, so. Come on, dude, hug it out. <sighs> You'll be fine, mate. You'll be absolutely fine. I promise you. You'll be fine. Honestly. <laughs> If I don't have a good night's sleep fairly soon, I'm going to end up throttling someone inadvertently. I'm not, I'm not joking, I'll, I'll lose my rag. I want a bed to sleep in, I'm not going to get soaking wet. The group are relying on their two builders, Andy and Paul, to construct a new watertight shelter. But both have a very different idea about where to put it. We need to pick a location to build this shelter on. Correct. We have two potential locations. Uh, and is your place on the beach? Yeah. We can clear these little bits of thicket and brush easily. Yeah. Look, we've got a pit there for a fire pit. So this is absolutely perfect camp. Job's good. Is this, this, this is not Andy's, is it? You're more exposed to the tides, you're more exposed to the weather, and we're going to get bitten to smotherings by sandflies. It's not an option. No way. Andy's camp it looks like it'll flood at the tidal surge, there's plastic bottles everywhere, I think we'll get bitten to shit. Pointless, give him my opinion, mate. Fucking nobody listened to fucking me. I Can would love to have come down here for Andy's sake and gone, this is fucking brilliant, mate. Yeah. But the trouble is, we walked in here and it, I, did, I kept my mouth shut, but within 30 seconds, everyone went, are you fucking joking? I'm a builder. People get me in to fix anything. Customers phone me up to put their IKEA bedroom stuff together. It's like, well, fuck you then. With Andy's site rejected, Paul shows the men his preferred location. Because it's elevated, this is not really going to get that wet. It's got a fairly good canopy. We can all sleep here on the dry. Correct. You've got a nice little breeze coming through as well. Yeah, I like this place. Now, right, what do you want me to do, Paul? Well, what we need now, cross members. I've bitched about Paul being a volcanic rhinoceros, but you know what? He's single-minded, but he makes clear decisions and sticks by them. And he's been right more than he's been wrong so far. Ah! We're fucking saved. We'll be all right now. Knew there was power on the island. I find it a bit shocked at how um, difficult <laughs> how, how difficult it's been. We're all here doing the same shit. Yeah. We're yeah, all not yeah, sure yeah. whether we're shitting. See it, boys. Determined to boost Joe's morale and keep his mind off home, father of three Vic has asked him to join in with the shelter build. It's a challenge. A fucking challenge. It'll adapt to all this quicker than any of us will. Far quicker. It's a case of making sure everybody guides everybody else to, in the right direction. I, I, I do firmly believe we will become an excellent team uh, to the point of becoming almost like a tribe. <laughs> We just say, building camp at the top of a steep hill in the middle of the rainy season is the stupidest idea ever had. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And I'm obviously the weakest link. Joe, you're not the weakest link, you're just missing home. It's, it's a natural thing to feel. Yeah. I think some people do think I'm the weakest link, mate. I don't think that. Do you think, think that? I don't think No, you. but I think you do. Do you think so? Yeah. Crikey, what's made you think that? Day one when I met you, you've been shouting orders at me from Have day I? dark. No. But we're carrying stuff in and out of a jungle and I've got a really heavy rucksack on my back and you're saying, Joe, I think it's a good idea if you do this. Joe, I think it's a good idea if you do that. Now, you've not been shouting okay. orders at anyone else, but I think you feel that I'm the youngest, therefore, naturally, you've got some authority over me. Ooh. And that's been grinding on me a little bit. Joe intimated that I'd been giving him a hard time, which I truly have only tried to be positive with everybody. I was devastated. Oh, You're being aggressive. You you You're being passive aggressive, and that's not fair. All right? It's he just told me I'm being passive aggressive, but we're having a laugh. Didn't. However bad your situation is, you can't wallow in negativity. 
You know, survival is about dogged determination, learning from your failures, and never giving up. And Churchill once said a great quote. He said, if you're going through hell, keep going. The balls are doing the backstroke in a bucket of sand. I'm hungry, I'm tired. And all that's going through my head is, I don't, I don't self-harm at home, so why the hell am I self-harming out here? AM. I've never been in an environment where last night you hear a thunderstorm and it's now daylight and it's still thundering and it's still raining. Overnight, torrential rain has once again battered the island. The men have managed to protect the fire, but their spirits are low. It is a bit mind-boggling that you can have this much rain in so long it just keeps coming. Yesterday, the men started work on a new shelter. But only half built, it was no match for the elements. I'm massively underestimating this place, massively. I'm so skinny and have been for as long as I can remember. Last night, when I got my first hunger rumble, food's playing on my mind a lot more. It's hard. This is... Apocalyptic weather. And it's going to threaten to wash us out of this camp. For the third night in a row, the men have barely slept. The positive? It's daytime. I can see how crap it is. <laughs> Here in the tropics, when it rains, it's not just nice British drizzle. It's torrential. We can hardly hold a conversation. You've got to spend so much time and energy trying to keep your fire alight when you could be out there fishing or hunting or making shelters. However strong and determined, after a while, it saps you. You know, it saps your spirit in the same way it saps a life out of a fire. I cannot face another day on here. Honestly, I can't. I'm, I'm at the stage of almost a, a breakdown, to be totally honest. You just can't imagine how tough it is. Unbelievable. <laughs> The island's youngest member, Joe, says he's had enough. Four weeks, I think, would be a push for me. Six weeks, I didn't think I'd ever make. The pain that I'm going to go through here, leaving the loved ones at home, Charlotte, all the rest of it. Then why did you sign up? I don't know. Ten a.m., the storm finally passes. Determined to leave as soon as possible, graphic designer Joe uses the emergency satellite radio to request an evacuation boat. I just really strongly believe that as a person, physically, mentally, and all the rest of it, I'm not going to make the rest of the time on the island. And I've not made any rash decisions because I'm aware that you can make decisions in the heat of a moment, and I haven't. I just really fancy a margarita pizza. Joe wants to go home. I can't believe it. He's not been here four days. We've not even started. He wants to go home. Joe has agreed to stay on the island for another 24 hours before making a final decision about whether he wants to leave. You want it up there, mark it, and we'll cook it. Is it long enough? Um, no. You can go halfway then. In the jungle, work continues on the shelter. Can you, um, get that any higher. The group have persuaded Andy to help out, hoping the prospect of a dry night will encourage him to stay. Yeah, one there. Yeah. And then one down here. Right, oh, so not there then. Eh? So not there then. I didn't say to put it there. The whole reason I said I don't want to tie a sled knot in this piece because we need to get the piece of wood in there first. Paul is a project manager in a construction company and Andy is a builder. Them two personalities just clash because one wants to tell the other one what to do and then this one wants to tell this one what to do. All we need to do is tie this on here, please. That's all we need to do. Yeah, but where's the bit of wood? Because I'm not tying a fucking knot if there ain't a bit of wood in it. Look, that ain't going nowhere. That's the shape I want. Andy really has a massive problem with me. Everybody's been tiptoeing around me for the past four days. Um, it's just been a fucking prick. But what can you do? Something's going to explode at some point. 
since yesterday. Andy has been hinting that he too might request evacuation from the island. Why are you threatening to go home, Andy? All sorts of reasons, mate. Come on, spit us out. No, I don't need to. Why are you so aggressive? I'm asking you a civil no. question. Yeah, you've asked me it three times. The yeah, first time what? should have been enough, then the second time, now you're asking no, a fourth time. they were different time. questions. And then you're, then you're calling me aggressive because yeah. I don't want to answer a question that you've asked four times. I haven't asked it four times. You have. You said, I said, why do you want to go home? You went, because I do. I went, well, give us a reason. You went, I'm not going to give you a reason. Exactly. I said, so then you asked again, and then you asked again, and then you asked again. I didn't ask again, Andy. You did. What is the fucking matter with you? Nothing the matter with me, son. At all. Do we wedge that there and then prop it up? Whatever Andy wants to do. I've had enough. Hang on. Who you need your expertise? I said, stop asking me. And he carried on asking me. <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. With the camp's two builders walking off the job, construction of the shelter grinds to a halt. There's no doubt there's a lot of strong, pretty macho personalities on the men's island. And yeah, they're all trying to find their place in that pecking order. Uh, but the danger when you get these high-pressure situations like this is that the alpha males start to compete instead of cooperate. And then the danger is it blows a whole group apart. I'm used to being in control, I'm used to being organised, everything running efficiently. It's what I do. That ignorant twat wants to do it his way, yeah. and he hasn't got a fucking clue. It makes your head... It's like it wants to implode. Seriously, my will is a punch to the throat. He's down, gone, finished. It's over with. I walk away. Happy days. I can't do that yet. Bang, done. Fat cunt. You know what I mean? There's a lot of bad blood in camp at the minute, largely between Paul and Andy. We've got enough on our plate in this island without alpha male dick swinging. I think uh, everyone just needs to man the fuck up, really. I feel like every I do, mate, he's just there, ready to fucking knock, knock it down, you know, or criticise. It's like, fuck off, you know? And if he goes, I'll stay. He's my main problem. So, I overheard a conversation with Andy. His exact words were, if Paul leaves, that would be good, because then I will stay. I'm not dealing with that sort of immaturity. He's supposed to be a grown man. I'm not being blackmailed. I don't need to be surrounded by this immaturity. I might just have to go. Are you thinking about fucking off? Can't be fucking bothered. Mate, you can't go, mate. You literally can't go. Do you think that you would regret it later on? You will regret it. I think I won't. Just suck it up, mate. Lift up your skirt. Wash the sand out of your vagina, mate. In a disastrous turn of events, Three men, including the island's two builders, are now threatening to walk. Andy, Paul and Joe all want to leave this island. I'm amazed that they've come this far and want to give up so early. As yet another storm hits the island, the men call a crisis meeting. I know it sounds cutthroat, but we need to, to keep as many of those guys here as we can. But for any of them to change their mind is a win. There's been so much discussion about people leaving. My personal, personal opinion is that we are stronger together than we are apart. Agreed. Joe, I'm, my hope is that you might have thought We've differently We've already done overnight. this. I've already had the chat with everyone. People have already said the thoughts. I've already said my thoughts, but... On that note, I will be saying no more. I'll just be waiting for the boat to arrive and to leave. OK? Paul, would you just let us know how you're feeling at the moment? I came to this island as a bit of a release, you know, to get away from my everyday life. Um, I'm not really confrontational. I don't like having arguments with people. I'd rather just step away from the situation. The final nail in the coffin was to hear somebody say that it was good that I was going, which I thought was a bit of a shame, but in another way, it confirmed my decision, and um, in that case, that's why I decided to go. If one goes, there's no point in the other going. Right, here we go. How we make that decision? Here we go. I this is no now idea. we're getting to the country. Yeah. He segregated himself from the group from day one. We're having the discussion. He doesn't want to know. We haven't got any beds. He makes himself a bed. 
he goes off and sulks. Somehow that's my fault. I've had no sleep for four days. Neither has anybody. I've had nothing at all. You've been sleeping. Sorry, mate, you've been sleeping. Andy, nobody's had any sleep. As a group, no one here has had enough sleep to, to give them the energy to do what they've had to do the next day. So you pointing the finger at me and saying, well, you've had sleep, fine. That's your problem. Well, I've been having a laugh up until I heard one of my teammates say they wanted me to go. I was having a right crack. Now I'm not. In a community, not everyone gets on. And that is a fact of life. And we can't change that. So let's build our community. You and you, just keep, keep your distance. At least we're together. We're two men up. We can build a shelter in a day rather than taking two days with two men down. The big strong man and the builder. If you two fuck off, then we're fucked, aren't we? See, I don't want to lose two builders, you regardless can. of your characters. <laughs> we, we, we need you to stay. I'm going to walk away and then that would well, the hopefully... Big, the Andy can, no, listen. So Andy can enjoy his experience and hopefully five. Then you're not losing two people, are you? You're losing one. I'm leaving the island. Whether Paul leaves or not. Whether Paul leaves or not. I would rather Paul stay. He's a stronger man than me. He'll be more benefit to you. But either way, I'm sorry, I'm going. For him to fucking say, I'm glad he's going, good, then I'll stay, then all of a sudden he hasn't got his own way again, and it's, oh, I'm going, there's other reasons. It's fucking immaturity. It's sulking and it's attention seeking. And you don't bollocks, want to escape going, I realise bollocks. this. I'm not having it. I am going off this island because I'm not being held responsible for that. End of story. Next time on the Women's Island. Ah, what? A huge fucking snake came just past me. Fucking hell. At the minute, we are barely coping with the situation in which we find ourselves. Barely. Oh, shit, no, wait, sit forward. We have nothing to drink. We don't know where we are.